the advantage of the wooden rod is that it breaks if the weld freezes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt to replace that wooden rod, but it's a bigger pain in the butt when the teeth shear off the gears up in the wood mill. So it's like a shear pin. It's a safety mechanism. Um, I'll just mention that uh, a lot of windmill companies, like around the turn of the 19th century up to the 1910s, made what they call power windmills, which are different from the water pumping windmills. We're not talking electricity, we're still talking mechanical. But they, instead of converting the rotary motion of this wheel into an up and down reciprocal motion, they ran it through a set of bevel gears so it turned a shaft, a rotary shaft, and they either use it geared down. So like on the air motor, the wheel goes around about three and a half times for every stroke of the, of the pump, because then it runs in a lighter wind. But a lot of these power mills that were manufactured uh, had, they were geared up. And so there'd be a rotating shaft that would come down the middle and was geared up. And then, then there'd be a right angle gearbox at the bottom with some kind of a, a pulley on it. And then they could run belt, belts off to run a saw or a grain grinder or whatever. Uh, a lot of those were sold. Uh, and it's once, uh, like, Small one long gasoline engines became available and uh, tractors with belt power. Uh, the market went right out of these power mills because uh, people wanted to be able to do those jobs when they wanted to and they didn't want to have to wait for a real windy day. And uh, to be quite honest, they weren't very efficient. Uh, it, it took a very big windmill to get like a horse and a half, two horsepower out of it. Uh, so, There are a few of these power mills out there in windmill museums. I've never actually got to play with one. I'd love to get my hands on one and uh, restore it and put it up, but I have not. Uh, the closest I came one time was a guy, I went to a guy's place, and he said he had parts of one laying there, and I could see some really big windmill blades, but they were just peeking out from under where they bulldozed the barn foundation. <laughs> And I wasn't ambitious enough to, pick, to move, uh, you know, 50 tons of rocks to, to uncover what would have been a real crunch tough mess. Um, of course, a windmill that only pumps water when the wind's blowing. So if you want to, if you want. If you have water when the wind's not blowing, you've got to store it. You've got to have a, some kind of a tank or in a, our climate where things freeze up in the winter, you, it's the uh, most effective way to have that and not have freezing problems is to have a buried tank. I live over in the uh, Bluff and Cooley Company, Bluff and Cooley Country uh, along the Mississippi River, straight west in here over uh, uh, at the western edge of Wisconsin, and uh, most of the farms there were dairy farms, and at, back in the 1920s, a lot of people, a lot of farmers would have a well drilled, and they'd put it way uphill from the house and the buildings, and they'd dig a big cistern there, or it might be maybe made out of brick, sometimes poured concrete, some of them held 20, 30,000 gallons. Then they dig sometimes hundreds of feet of trench <laughs> to, to lay pipe eight feet deep below frost from that sister down to their house and barn. And I, my hat is off to those guys because they did. They, the old timers tell me they did that in the winter time when they couldn't do the field work and they'd have to build fires to thaw the ground out. Because they'd have to cut wood to build those fires. And then they dig, they dig a trench <clears throat> long enough to put a ten foot piece of pipe in. Then they dig another trench about 20 feet away, and they put a cap on that, and they drive it with a sledgehammer. And I know if I did that, it would, if I did that, it'd never come out in that other trench. <laughs> but uh, those guys, uh, 
they uh, accomplished amazing things with what they had. So uh, over in that part of the world, people put up windmills and they worked their butts off, but then they had a running water system. They didn't have, it didn't have to have a pressure tank. And that's probably why where I, in my part of the world, there's, they maintain their windmills for a couple decades longer because they didn't have an incentive to go in and tear out that whole system when rural electrification came in. They kept their windmills going longer because they had a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it attitude, they had running water so they didn't have to start from scratch and then put in a new system. Um, I will go on and talk about uh, working on windmills in a minute. I'll open it up to say, does anybody have any questions about the water system, how the water system works? Exactly as energy efficient as it could be. 